Hello. This is part 11 of our systematic approach to ECGs. And in this section, we're going to talk about how to identify bundle branch blocks and how to identify if it's a right bundle branch block or a left bundle branch block. Getting started with a quick review of the electrical pathway of the heart. We know the electricity goes from the sinoatrial node to the AV node and then down our right and left bundles. So the rapid conduction occurs in these bundle branches and that's how we get our narrow QRS complex. Okay, because it's following the normal electrical pathway. But in, if there's a bundle branch, that's going to change. And so what we see in a right bundle branch pattern is that the electricity goes from the sinoatrial node to the AV node and then down our bundle branches, but it gets blocked at, on the right side. So the left side depolarizes and then slowly it will come across from the left side to the right side and depolarize the right side of the heart. So remember that V1 is sitting over by the right side of the heart as a detector and V6 over by the left side of the heart. So when you look at V1, you'll notice that that electrical current is coming at V1 towards the end. Let's take a look at it again. So we get to our AV node, it comes down the pathway but it's blocked on the right side. So then the electrical current at the end is coming across towards V1 and away from V6. And so that means that you're going to have an upward deflection at the end of the QRS complex in V1 and a downward deflection at the end of the QRS complex in V6. So up in V1 at the end of the QRS complex and down in V6. So to, when we look for a right bundle branch pattern, we want to see that that QRS duration is greater than 120 milliseconds. If it's less, if it's like 100 milliseconds and we can't really tell, at that point we're going to call it a non-specific intraventricular conduction delay. We know that V1, the last part, is up, and in V2, the last part of the QRS is down. I mean in V6. If you're not sure when you look at V6, you can also use lead 1. And if you can't tell in V6, look over at lead 1. And the last part of the QRS should be down in lead 1 as well. This can be a normal finding. And that's in contrast to a left bundle branch block. In a left bundle branch block, what you're going to see is your electrical activity come from the SA to the AV node, down the pathway, blocked on the left side so the right side depolarizes. Then once the right side is depolarized, the electricity gradually comes across from the right to the left side, depolarizing the left side of the heart slowly. So what we'll see on ECG then, remember our detector V1 is by the right side and our detector V6 is by the left side. So what we're going to see there is that last part of the QRS is going down in V1 and coming up in V6. So let's look at that one more time. So we have our electrical current depolarizing the right side of the heart. And the last part of the depolarization of the ventricle is the electrical current going across from the right side to the left side. So it's away from V1, so going down, and towards V6. So if we look at our left bundle branch block, we're going to see that QRS duration is again wide, greater than 120 milliseconds. We look at the last part of the QRS in V1, it's down, and the last part of the QRS in V6 or 1 is up. A left bundle branch block, it's important to remember, is different than a right bundle branch block in that it is typically not considered a normal variant or normal finding and it's considered a sign of prior heart damage. So in summary, bundle branch blocks. They have a wide QRS complex greater than 120 milliseconds. The terminal portion of the QRS being up in V1 tells us it's a right bundle branch block the terminal portion of the QRS being up in V6 or lead 1 tells us it's a left bundle branch block. A right bundle branch block could be normal, but a left bundle branch block is a sign of prior heart injury. Thank you.